Alrighty guys, this video is going to be a little K-Roller build update video. Um, we are down at Kenda at the moment, so we're just quickly filming this intro. Just for, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the content guys. Um, we are thrashing to try and get the car ready. Um, getting, getting closer, but there is still a very, very long way to go. Yeah, so, where... but we are still, I'm still hopeful that I'm going to have this thing ready for road trip uh, coming up. So anyway guys, hope you enjoy the video. See you later. Alright, what are we doing now? We are uh, put some fittings on the fuel cell to mount it at the back of the car. It yeah. used to be in the front, now we're moving it to the back. So this is actually the same fuel cell that we used to use for the methanol and the 4K, so just repurposing it, changing some fittings around and pop yeah. it in. I, um, I did wash it out with water and I have already welded on it and it didn't explode, so. Good to go. Making things work over there? Uh, didn't really go. Red hot crack, that's for sure. Uh, we need things to work at this point, too. <laughs> I was gonna say, we don't really have time for failing. No. Something like this. What are you actually doing in here? I'm making a uh, bracket for the drive-by-wire throttle. Um, That's it. Up in there? Put it up in there somewhere. Kind of something kind of like this. Oh, it's getting there. Adding weight though. It is, we feel it. Tense right there. Oh dear. Delete, delete. That's not too bad. Let's get there. And then something like this. Just need to get spaced out a bit. From where? Um, I think they're just that. Or can we just calibrate <laughs> what's maximum throttle position? We can just calibrate maximum, but I think it just needs a little bit more trimmed away. Perfect, just like a bought one. Only took 10 times longer. Yeah, anyway, so that's gonna bolt there, and then that actually picks up some of the bolts that holds the brake master cylinder in. So, piece of eight mil plate, so it's pretty sturdy. It's probably a bit overkill, but um, I don't think it should be moving anywhere. That also goes up hard against the firewall too, so it's got a, um, I think it should be sweet. Alrighty, so one of the issues that we had is that we've deleted the, both the aircon and the power steering from the K-Series. And so when you do that, the drive belt no longer lines up or there's no way to tension it. So we've just been coming up with an idea. What we're going to do is we're going to run a drive belt. It's going to come up. It's going to go over this uh, idler pulley here, which is actually off uh, Mitsubishi Pajero. Um, got that from Repco. We're then going to have a tensioner assembly here. We're going to go around the alternator, back over the water pump, and around the crank pulley. So we've uh, had a look at it, a few different designs and variations. Um, this we think is gonna probably work the easiest. This is gonna be a coolant hose that pops and runs through there. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this and just extend this out a little bit so that it clears the drive belt. Um, and yeah, just nice and simple solution, hopefully. It's like magic, magic happening over here. Oh, there, there. That is how it That looks like it's going to do things. Work. 
Shit, yeah. It's beefy enough. <laughs> what is it? Is it two? Bits two. Of yeah. Can we stand on the catching? I want any uh, map gas. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of those to hold that and put that with some stilts and just keep twisting until you tear all the rubber. Oh yeah. Possibly. Oh, what about fire? One eternity later. Bongo. I bet you'll find it. I'm cutting that there anyway. Alright, K series update. So, where are we at? We've got bits and pieces done. So, diff, I pulled it out. It's got new wheel bearings, brakes, all that sort of stuff. Um, painted the diff housing so now it's nice and black. Um, got that Rogan Industries label on there. Uh, got some springs ordered. They're not on yet. These ones are super heavy. They're like 325 pounds or something ridiculous. The car doesn't even compress them. Um, so we got that getting updated. Um, exhaust system is done. Fingers done an insane job with that. So we've run three and a half inch alley. Um, this identifies as a muffler. Um, and I'm sure that will sound okay. Who knows the four cylinder will probably sound terrible. Um, <clears throat> Gearbox is up in there. Now, we haven't actually touched on what we're running. So this is an R151 out of like a 2TR Hilux. Um, and then we're running the night part bell housing up here. Um, got to get a different clutch fork and a few other little bits and pieces to get it all suited up. But that's sort of all sitting there. Um, this absolute masterpiece here is uh, the transmount that Fingers has come up with. It's just like... I think Kyle's right, he said it looks like something out of Spider-Man and I can see that it definitely does look like possibly something from Spider-Man. Um, front end, nothing too crazy. Uh, nothing really to see here. Um, also, that identifies as a muffler. Um, emissions compliant, industry standard, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, front end, oh yeah, in a cooler. Uh, sitting there, we'll put it down and you can have a look from the top. All right, so back on the ground. Um, <clears throat> fuel cell, it's actually the one that you used to have in the front for methanol and stuff. Made a couple little changes to it. It's now running twin uh, pumps off the side of it. So there's two, the Peerberg 360s. I really love these things. They're super, super quiet. They're fairly low current draw, but they really pack a punch. Um, two of these would probably be good for, uh, in something like this, probably you know, up around 800,000 horsepower, somewhere like that. Like, no, we're not even planning for that. Um, but the five or 600 that I am planning for is probably a little bit of a stretch just for just one of these. So I'm just gonna run two. Um, the lines will then run forwards and then um, imaginary, still gotta get some bits, but um, we'll have a bulkhead fitting, punching down through here, um, feed and return go through there. So tank and boot, that's all secured. Um, <coughs> interior wise, yeah, nothing really to see here. Same stuff. And then engine bay. All right. So she looks a lot more complete than in the last video. So I'll give you a slow walk around. So we've got catch can. Uh, we're actually waiting for one more dash 10 here for them. But yeah, so two dash 10s here, two dash 10s here. These will run around like so. Venting the engine and all that good stuff. Um, radiator in, fingers knocked off a shroud, 14 inch Maradine fan, um, obviously most of the bits and pieces, but yeah, the charge pipe stuff's are done now, 
So this here going over boost control solenoid. Um, there, so yeah, still plumbing and stuff to go, which is pretty normal, but yeah, we're looking a lot more complete. So that's probably a fairly close to how it's gonna look in the final rendition, just with lots more hoses and wires and stuff everywhere. So that's the next sort of battle to wage is the one of plumbing and wiring. So, uh, but actually very next water wage is the motor is coming out to be built. So that will be sort of the next episode where we're gonna be tearing the motor down and just going through and doing a bit of a quick budget build on this K-series. All right, hang on. Look at this piece of masterpiece. Once it's on the stand, I'll go into this in more detail, but this is something that Fingers has designed for all those people who are doing aircon and power steering delete for real wheel drive K, K series. Um, so obviously you don't need an engine mount here anymore. Where this is where they, this is the main engine mount point for a K series because normally they're in front wheel drive uh, vehicles or, you know, or, or wheel drive, but they're east west orientation. So this uses that mounting point. We're actually using another little ribbed idler pulley under here, which is off a of Pajero, so super commonly available in Australia. And then actually uses the original pulley off the, um, off the automatic tensioner. And so then this allows it to pivot. We've even got a 3A tech drive in there so that you can tension it. But this looks like it's gonna be, obviously yet to be proven, but I think this is gonna be pretty killer for AC power steering delete for real dry case series. Alrighty guys, so we have pulled the engine down and we have got it all prepped here. So here it is, this has got, I just pulled the crank and rods and everything out of it um, and we have washed the block with the gurney. Uh, we then got some tape, taped off the deck. Um, I'm about to go get some sugar, we're gonna fill it up. I'm gonna do the epoxy fill. This is fairly common, guys do this all the time in the States. Uh, the idea of it is just with these K series blocks, um, there's just not a whole lot of meat that supports the liner. The rest of the engine, like the, a, a very, you know, the main girdle and everything's really, really stout. This cylinder stability is probably the biggest Achilles heel. Uh, so the epoxy deck is kind of a, uh, a cheap and easy way to beef it up a little bit. So that's what we're gonna be giving it a go. Um, so we're gonna go get some sugar and get this done. The rest of the engine's all just torn in bits here. It's uh, just roughly ripped apart. Um, just sort of had to get it all apart, but everything looks really good. Crank looks amazing. And bearings all look really good and head and everything. It looks, it looks like it's been driven by Miss Daisy, honestly. It's um, a lot of carbon deposits everywhere. But um, yeah, that's what we wanted to see. Otherwise it looks really good. Doesn't look like it's been overheated or anything. So good signs. Got the epoxy flooring going in, in the block. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna put some flake into that, Mark. Oh yeah. <laughs> unicorn, unicorn glitter. Fuck yeah. Hopefully it doesn't make unicorn glitter in other places. <laughs> it's only on five threes, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, this is a lot easier 
then uh, before I get into LA cylinder heads, I can give you the tip. Alrighty. Firstly, disclaimer, I will admit I've been not the greatest at filming this because I have uh, just been busy as. I, uh, and at the moment it's like seven o'clock, I've just finished work and now I'm up at fingers doing a bit more on the K-Series. So, what we're talking about is we're talking about the epoxy fill. So the epoxy is now in, as you can see. I'll let that sort of get you guys have a look at that. So what I've done is the epoxy obviously is in here. Uh, and then what I've done is I put the factory head gasket back over it again. And I've marked the holes and then I've drilled them through. Um, so all the way up. These ones I sort of did on a bit of an angle so they go in and, and not touching the sleeve anywhere. Um, all the holes, then just put a whole heap of holes up here. Uh, and then I've put it and put the hose into it, um, in through here, and again in through here, uh, and have flushed all of the sugar out. So I did it, I flipped the block upside down and just all different ways, just rolled it over and, and wait till I couldn't see any more sugar coming out of it. It seems pretty good now. Um, and yeah. <clears throat> So far, so good. So now the block is going to take a little journey over to the machine shop. It's going to get skimmed. So you're just going to take a light, light, light little skim off that, even though it looks amazing, but I just want it to be perfectly flat. Um, I want everything to be dead level um, and square so that hopefully a head gasket will stay in this thing for as long as physically possible. So that's going to get a skim. It's going to get a very light home. The rings that did come out of this motor were a bit smoked. Um, I might get a close up for them later for you, but you could tell that there is the oil control rings are absolutely full of crap. Um, so this, I would say, you could probably clean them up, but realistically rings aren't that expensive. So I'm going to do a very light home on it and I'll put a fresh set of rings in it. I'll obviously gap them to spec as well, um, but I'm going to do that. Um, and yeah, fresh set of bearings, and then this is all going to go back together with our max feeding rods, um, a set of valve springs and head studs. That's basically all that's going to get modified on this thing. It's going to be a Ceruta head gasket, the epoxy black block fill, a set of max speeding H-beam rods, and a set of the Skunk 2 Alpha valve springs. That is going to be the extent of everything. It's going to be stock pistons back in it, it's going to be stock cams, um, basically that's all we're doing um, and I feel like that should be more than enough to get us to our goal of that sort of five six hundred wheel horsepower uh, but also reliable at that level something that we can uh, beat on race regularly at that power level and not have to constantly wrench on the thing so anyway guys uh, that will wrap it up for the block epoxying um, catch you next time Take that back. Perfect. <laughs> Have an accelerator pedal.